how you all doing? Okay, so in this video we're going to be finishing off the cylinder head. We're going to be talking down the cylinder head notch. Uh, we're going to be reinstalling the cams and setting the uh, timing up. And then hopefully we're going to be setting all these little tippy tippy tappets up. See so if I've got a feeler gauge. I hope I've got a feeler gauge. I'm sure I have somewhere. So let's get cracking. Okay, so we've got on all the uh, cylinder head nuts finger tight. Uh, we have to tighten them up in a sequence. I'll show you that in a minute. And then we have to torque them down to the specified torque settings. 33 foot pounds I think it is. Uh, these four bolts which go on either corner of the cam chain. Uh, you tighten those up last but there is no torque setting that I can see for them. It just says tighten these up last securely. But on the notes it says tighten them up to the specified torque wrench settings. So anyway, let's just plonk these in to keep them uh, in a safe place. Three, number four, and there we go. Really. Okay, and all these uh, cylinder head nuts are 14 millimeter. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so there's the cylinder head sequence of tightening up I'm going to follow. And there is the uh, cylinder torque wrench settings, cylinder head, and they are 33, 33.0 foot pounds. So I've got to set this to 33. I don't know if you can see that, it will show up on the camera. Yeah. So the sequence is one, two, three, four. That's the four middle ones. So we just uh, tighten it up not too much. Just a bit at a time. And we want number five, five, six. So that's five and that's six. Five, six, and that's seven and that's eight. Seven, eight. That's nine. And the other side is ten. Then this one is eleven. And the final one is over there twelve. So I'll just keep doing that until we hear the click. So this one we should go for the click. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's it, all talked up. Okay then, so now we can do these uh, Allen bolts. I'm just going to use a speed brace because I don't want to over tighten them obviously. And uh, I 
did sort of grind this socket down because it didn't quite fit in there when I stripped the engine down many years ago they were just stick that in there but I have to move you slightly just tighten those up get the socket stuck yet and that one show you how tight I'm doing it on this so I'm only using the speed brace so you know I don't want to use a ratchet and do them too tight so I'll just do it as tight as I possibly can with this speed brace and I think that will do so let me finish that and uh, see what to do next okay then so it's cam time oh. as you know there's two cams but they're not identical they are different so be careful but uh, there is markings on them to tell you which one goes where if you look down there you can see IN, hopefully you can see that, which means that is for the inlet and uh, at the other end there's the letter L which means that goes on to the left so that's the left so that wants to go that way and this one wants to go at the back of the engine like so then we've got this one which must be the exhaust it also has markings on it's got the letter L on that side which means that goes left obviously but on down there it's got an EX which is called the exhaust so that obviously goes at the front where the exhausts are but before we jump the gun again and go too far we're going to fit this the cam chain tensioner so this is a bit tricky there is some small components so I'm going to try and put a bit of cloth down there because in case I drop anything okay so then we want the uh, cam chain tensioner rear guide and uh, if you could see that swoopy bit the swoopy bit goes down the bottom but it goes that way so that swoopy bit is down inside so I have to try and lie that in there like that With that just to sort of fit over there like that but first we need these little barrel things and we've got these little hole clips so we just push the barrel through and put the hole clip in how hard can it be so as you can see there's one hole there and one hole up here and it is a bit tricky because the cam chain is trying to pull you back down that way so let's try and get the first one in see it's a good job I had my piece of cloth in there try the top one first it might be easier there's like a little notch in the top of the what's it so you can't twist around that's that one okay then we have to try and locate the old clip push 
region like that and uh, I find it easier and then all that bit over hopefully you can see there we go and that's that one here we go we do the same with the bottom one I would say push these all clips in from the top so gravity is sort of holding them in place as well if you know what I mean try and find the hole push it down and try and put the clip over like so. so there we go Could remove that cloth because nothing fell inside Let's give those barrels a squirt because I didn't Hopefully we can get that down there. There we go. Then we can put our uh, 10 millimeter bolts in. But I think they should have thread lock on as well. I'm just going to put a bit of thread lock on them just in case. And that's it, just whack them in with the speed brace and then it's 12 newton meters. And there we go, that's the cam chain. Okay, so here's where we set the timing up for the bottom end. We just get a, I think it's a 12 millimeter spanner onto there. Mine was already set, but just rotate it clockwise you see there's a little mark there on this spider shaped whatever it is and then on this little back thing there's a T mark that we want to be on the T well there's a few marks but there's one mark with a T next to it we want to be on the T mark <laughs> we just line that line up to the T mark I think that's pretty spot on I'll move you in a bit closer so you can see it but you will go on an angle okay Hopefully you can see that there's a T mark there and an F mark we want the T mark and we want that line to line up with it so that's the bottom set now we need to set the top. Now I know I might sound like I'm a mechanic but I'm not a mechanic. Uh, the reason I'm just saying all this is because I've got a book and it's telling me what to do. But I'm just saying that because it just seems like uh, quite a few people keep asking me if I can fix this and I can fix that for them and how much will I charge. No, I'm not a mechanic. Don't trust me, I'll probably break some of it. <laughs> okay then, so before we fit the cams, let's uh, give everything a good squirt. Like so. And on the, this end there's a letter L, so that goes to the left. push that through there uh, where it says the exhaust leave that 
floating at the top wherever it sort of relaxes near to the top as you can there we go same with the other one got the L so that's the left and it's got the inlet so that's the back keep the inlet writing at the top that just fall where it relaxes just give everything a good squirt with engine oil okay so we need to fit these little guides one in there and uh, put our little rubber seals on there's four of them all together one this side, two this side and two the other side Just give a little squirt of oil on the seals ok then we can get the uh, camshaft top caps uh, if you can see there it says in or so that is on the inlet side so that is carburetor side and it's the one on the right so that will be this one uh, that one says exhaust L so that will go on the far side at the front with the exhaust so one says inlet left so that'll go over to the left side on the carburetor side and that one's got the markings disappeared basically so that one will just go there obviously so let me just whack these on and I'll get back to you Ok so that's all the caps on and all the bolts in and the bolts should be locked down to 10 foot pounds which is not a lot that's one two three this timing at the top ok so hopefully you can see that there the in mark for the inlet that should be level with the cylinder head and as you can see mine's not quite right so what I'm going to do is go on the nuttle of the other side just get a small drift which by case it's a box spanner if you get my drift I just uh, drift it round slightly like so same on the other side we've got the EX exhaust we've got to line that one up with the uh, cylinder head so that's why when you put the crankshafts in you have the uh, writing at the top try and get these marks buffly where they want to be don't get them too far out otherwise you've got to spend all day trying to drift it from there all the way around to there if you get my drift now let me get those perfectly lined up and I'll be back ok 
back out, try and show you on the exhaust one. Just using a small hammer and a drift. Keep checking it. Just a touch more, I think. I think that's about it. If you sort of tilt the engine up like I have. And then look down the top of the cylinder head down there and you could see we're just about spot on and same with that one so be with me while I set up the next shot and I'll be back get to the chopper Right then, from the front of the engine first, we need to get the cam chain onto the first sprocket. And obviously get rid of all the slack of the chain, what's down the other end. So, pull it tight as you can. And then hook it onto the uh, first sprocket, the exhaust sprocket. Try not to have any slack down there whatsoever. Okay, so now is the tricky bit. I have to pick you up for this. Uh, if you could see down your timing chain tensioner, the CCT, if you press on that with a screwdriver or something, you can see it move it. And this uh, guide down the bottom there is in the way so if you press on that you can see hopefully it's moving that guide out the way so you can get your chain on and yes it's all a bit tricky Once we've got the chain on there, we haven't quite got it on there, but there we go, that's it, it's on there, it's on the sprocket and down the back there on the sprocket down the back but now obviously we're a mile out so hopefully we can keep lifting the chain and moving the wheel round moving the wheel round moving the sprocket round oh, this is going to be good fun here we go so let's keep rotating the wheel holding the chain out of the way do you think it's about right that right no nope, still not right to come back a bit I've gone too far I've managed to trap the screwdriver in there so Two hands free. Still pretty tricky. No, nope, still one more, one more link, I think. there just go get the sprocket back onto the bloody camshaft <laughs> ah. 
Oh, I think it's on. Right, I'll show you what I did with the screwdriver to lock it into place. Put the screwdriver in that way. And if you could see down there, hopefully you can see down there. There's a little slot. I'll just push that into the slot. And then pushed on it and it locked into place. So that's on there. Now we've got to put the sprocket bolt back in. <gasps> and turn the engine. Oh my god. Then we can insert our bolt back in. Like so. They just loosely tighten it up so it because uh, if you leave it protruding it might catch on something on the uh, engine as you're turning the engine give you a false reading if the engine locks up you'll think oh my god I've not got the timing right just pinch it up save it to the one Moment of truth. My god, anxiety time. Try and get you in both shots so you can see the spanner and the thing moving, hopefully. Right, carefully do this. If you feel any lock it up whatsoever, stop. Pray. Here we go. Counterclock or anti clock. Turn the engine. Oh, it feels quite tight. So far, so good. So I think that's gone back to the timing mark. Well, you won't be able to see it from over there, but that's gone back to the Tommy Mark, 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 Mike. So that's one resolution. Let's do it once more. <laughs> Perfectly splendid. Once more for good luck. Oh, yeah, baby. One small. This is fun. Back onto the timing mark. Perfectly splendid. Yes. Okay, so now we're back on with this timing mark with two resolutions. Let's make sure the sprocket timing marks are in the right place as well and they look pretty good so I'm well happy with that so what I'm going to do now is rotate the engine again to where there's no bolts and put some Loctite on the other two bolts and then go round again to get back to these bolts and uh, put some Loctite on them. Yes, you're probably thinking, why don't you just take these out and uh, put Loctite on, put them back in. Because once you take them out, they can move slightly and they're a bloody bugger to get back in. Bear with me while I find my Loctite. La 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 eh, 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 oh. Let's put some Loctite on it blue no, it looks red but it's not it's blue same with the other one so they should be 
12 foot pounds. Talk. Wait till you hear the click. Like my new torque wrench. <laughs> right, I'll rewind it and I'll do the other two, and then I think we've got to set up the tappies. Okay, then, so I'm going to do the exhaust valves first, and they are exhaust valves 0.16 millimeters plus two. So I suppose that could mean you could go up to 18 millimeters. 0.18 millimeters, but I am using inches, so mine is 0.6 plus one. So I'm just using six 0.6 inches, and uh, when you come to do these, tap it so down there, 10 millimeter nuts. But uh, as you can see, there is no way you're going to get any sort of 10 millimeter spanner in there. So you do need a special tool, which is 2,000 pound from Honda. <laughs> but all I'm going to use is uh, a long 10 millimeter socket with a nice big hole in it. So I can push a screwdriver through it. Now I'm just going to use some more grips. I think that will give me plenty of tightness. Uh, some people do like uh, grind a couple of slots so they can put a spanner on it. So we'll just plunk that on there. Loosen it off. Uh, the screwdriver down there till it's located. Yes, definitely located. And where's the affiliation? And uh, on the tappet that you're setting, just make sure that the nuttle, of the, you know, the lobe, is sticking upwards, so there's no pressure on the tappet whatsoever. And if your nuttle's sticking upwards, you can't go wrong. Okay, then after all that fluffing around, I've worked it out. You don't have to get the feeling gauge underneath the uh, actual tappet like normal. You have to put the feeling gauge just under the cam lube and on top of the follower and then measure that gap so that's a lot easier so that's easier than I thought so I was trying to get the bloody feeler gauge down there underneath the uh, actual tappet got no chance till this is a loose fit feel the dragging That's a tight fit. Just look it up a bit. I'd say it's about there. Okay, so we've got the screwdriver in there. Just getting it twisted it tighter and looser. Till we get the feeler gauge dragging. Till we get the feeler gauge dragging nicely. So we could tighten the socket up. I know there's a lot of weight on it, but I'm allowing for that <laughs> by lifting it up slightly. Let's screw it down till we get that little dragging feeling. And then keep the screwdriver taut and lock the socket off. Take all the weight off this knot. Uh, that is a bit loose, so I'll do that one again. So I'll just do that to all the exhausts. And then for the inlet, it's the same procedure, but the inlet valves are 0 0.10 plus 2 millimeters. So I suppose you can be. 11 or 12 and that'll be okay and in the inches it is 
0.4 to 0.1 so I guess you could do that 5 0.5 inches so let me sort all that out and we'll be back okay then so that's it all set up it was a bit fiddly and time consuming but uh, all done uh, I think now all we've got to do is fill up the uh, cam chain tensioner CCT with oil clean engine oil Just give it a good squirt in there some people say you don't need to some people say you do Just give everything a good going over that's all I've got to do is put the lid on but that is disgusting so I won't bore you with cleaning that up we'll just leave it at that so simple as that yes yeah, so hope you enjoyed it hope it's been useful to you and uh, any questions or tips please leave a comment down below and if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching my video look after yourself stay well stay safe and I'll see you on the next one I see you in another light, brother.